Howdy, howdy, kids. Mr. B here. Time for us to start our new unit. Um, if you were in class today or if you're at home watching this and you didn't make it onto the Zoom, make sure you go through and take that practice um, review for the motion graphs. Sounds like we need to continue to go over those as well, but uh, we need to move on also. I can't spend forever on motion graphs. We need to cover states of matter. Now, as you can tell here by this front picture, we are only going to cover three states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases. And you probably have covered that before. I'm pretty sure they do that in third grade. Um, and they probably build upon it. They've done a pretty good job of making math and science and ELA build on each other. So I'm sure that's not the first time you've heard some of this. I'm just going to get a little bit deeper this time around. As we start this off, as with many, many, many things that I have in science, I have a study jam video here for you to watch. I'd love for you to watch that. Um, RJ does a great job of talking about um, solids, liquids, and gases. Um, I think it's pretty awesome, so go through and check that one out. And we are going to start off with some vocabularies. Vocabulary. Now, matter is not necessarily a new vocabulary word for us. We've had that before. But I think this might be the first time that I've actually had you write that down, and you're going to be responsible for it when we take our upcoming quiz and the quiz on Friday is going to be a vocabulary slash motion graphs quiz. So you'll need to know these vocabulary words and you'll need to be ready to take some a quiz on some motion graphs and we'll see how that goes. But matter. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Um, we, we talked about matter when we were talking about mass because mass was how much matter is inside of an object. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. So if you need a moment or two to pause the video, you can, so you can jot that uh, definition down. We're going to move on. Our next definition is volume, and as I've said all day in class today, I know that you just finished covering that with Ms. Saunders just recently in, in math, where you had to find the volume of those irregular shapes, those cubes. You had to count all those and find the volume. A uh, pretty tough unit, uh, but our definition for volume is pretty easy. Uh, how much space an object takes up is the volume of something. So whether we're talking about the volume of a solid, the volume of a liquid, or the volume of a gas, um, how much space that object takes up would change depending on um, each object, um, the different criteria that that object would fit. Um, we also have shape. Shape. Um, obviously, we look here. We noted, um, you know, one of Mr. Bullen's favorite things. This is the shape of a Bigfoot. Um, and so the shape of things, we need to understand shape is when something has like a form or an outline to it. Um, some things have shapes. If I were to show you the outline of a desk, you would probably be to tell me that's a desk. If I showed you the outline of a person, you would say that's a person. Um, it gets a little bit more difficult to draw the shape of something like a gas, which doesn't necessarily have a shape, or drawing the shape of water, which changes its shape depending on which container it's in. So those types of things make drawing those shapes very difficult, but it does give us a hint as to what an object might be. If it has a definite shape and a definite volume, soon you will notice that that's most definitely a solid. Um, so we'll get into that here in just a few moments. Again, as we said, um, we're only going to study three states of matter, but I don't want you to go into another class and, and think that I'm telling you that there are only three states of matter. That's not necessarily the truth. It is a uh, truth for us. You will only be quizzed and tested on solids, liquids, and gases. You won't be over here in the plasma, so don't stress out about that. First and foremost, let's talk about our solids. Solids are a form of matter that have a definite shape and take up a definite amount of space. So they have a very definite shape. This is an ice cube. It has a definite shape. It's cubed. It takes up a definite amount of space. Could I fit seven of those in a glass? Yes. 700 of them? No because they take up a definite amount of space. Um, and these would probably be the easiest to find the volume of um, to just use some of the things we learned in math. And I think that would be very simple. Now, as we start to look at solids, I want to kind of go back here in my notes that we did in class today. And we know that a solid, as you can see here, has a definite shape and a definite volume. But I want to take a look at what a solid might look like on the inside. And these little things are molecules, okay? And you'll notice that the molecules inside of this solid are very, very, very close together. They're very tight. 
and very, very close together. I can't take my hand and put it through a solid. It doesn't work because my hand can't go through all of these molecules that are all very, very, very close together. Um, I know this bottom sentence may not make a lot of sense, but we do need to know that water in solid form is called ice. Um, I would take the time to draw the, uh, the molecules inside of a solid. You're going to see that again as time goes by. Um, and it's very important to understand that because it's it's those the fact that those molecules are so close together and there is not a lot of movement there is very minor movement uh, but not a lot of movement going on that the solids have definite shapes if those molecules were a little further apart and they were able to be like move a little more freely then they would lose having a definite shape all of the time which is what we'll see when we get to our next uh, definition you can watch that video on your own. Very cool guy in the kitchen with a young lady. And they talk about solids, liquids, and gases in consecutive videos as we move through. Liquids. Liquids are a form of matter. They take up a definite amount of space. So they have a definite volume. But they do not have a definite shape. They do not have a definite shape. Um, they take the shape of their container. If you notice, there's somebody pouring the water into this glass. The water will take the shape of that glass. I could take that glass and pour it into a bowl. It would then take the shape of however much of the bowl it filled up. I could then throw that on the floor, and it would actually take the shape of the floor. It would be flat across the floor. Water does not have a definite shape. It definitely has a volume. Um, and that's kind of easy. If you have a water bottle sitting around your house, if you um, look at it pretty closely, You'll probably notice somewhere on there that it measures it out in fluid ounces and milliliters. And that'll give you a little bit of an idea of how much volume that liquid has. Um, and that's, that's an interesting way to look at that. So let's take a look at what water looks like on the molecular level. Again, water has a definite volume. It has no definite shape. It takes the shape of its container. What do you notice different here? Notice that the molecules are still kind of close together. They bump into each other and things of that nature, um, but the, the molecules are able to move and flow across each other a little bit more. Now, obviously, we can't run through solid walls. It doesn't work like that. If you've ever been in the pool, and, and anyone that's ever been in a pool typically has done this, um, if you try to run across the pool, you're going to notice that it, it, it takes a considerable more effort and energy than it does to normally run, and you are nowhere near as fast running in the pool. Um, and that's fine um, because the reason why that is is you're having to go through all of these different molecules that are in there. They just have not gotten so cold and lost enough heat that they've gotten close enough together to become a solid. But there are quite a bit of molecules that you're pushing up against when you are in water. So don't, don't let that confuse you. Just understand that I can put my hand through water. It's just very different than putting my hand through the air. And again, different than trying to put my hand through a solid block of ice. You can't do that. It doesn't work out that well. Again, another great video here from Discovery Ed. You can sign in and watch that. And that will round us out here with gases. Gases are a form of matter. They do not have a definite amount of space. So they don't have a definite volume. And they don't have a definite shape. Mr. Bullens, how can that be? Well, I technically can take something and compress all of these molecules way down, probably even to like right here, and then I can release that pressure and, the, and those molecules are going to bounce around and fill up the container. Um, but they don't take up a definite amount of space. You can compress them and you can also let them kind of move around a little bit more freely inside of a container. Now, if we go again to that molecular level and we start taking a look at gases, can I put my hand through a gas? Well, the answer to that is yes. Just do some karate chops in midair right now. And you can feel the air flying by your hand. You feel something touching you when you move your hand through the air, but you can't see it. But those are those little bit of molecules that you're having some resistance again as you move your hand through the air. The molecules are not close together. They are moving a lot faster in, in a gas state than they are in liquid or solid. Now, we know that water in its solid form is ice, water in its liquid form, shocker is water, and water in its gas form is called water vapor. And we learned that back when we first started talking about the water cycle. And we did through things like evaporation and condensation. Now, we're going to continue to talk about that. If you noticed 
Um, and let me try to pull that up really quickly here. If you noticed in your um, Google Classroom under Classwork for today, you may notice that you have this sheet. If you click on this sheet, matter, state of matter, not really a new definition. Solid, liquid, and gas, not necessarily a new definition. Condensation and evaporation are not new definitions. These might be a little different. Sublimation and desublimation, um, that is when things do something pretty amazing. Uh, freezing point is not a, a new word to you. You know about freezing. You put a glass of water in the freezer, it's going to turn from liquid to ice. And if you take that same glass of uh, ice out of the freezer and sit it on the counter, you are not surprised when it melts, melting point, and it turns from a solid back into a liquid. So a lot of these vocabulary words, they're not very new. I'm just continuing to build upon those as we go through some different things here. So we've had solids, liquids, and gases. Now I rounded out the day with this video and then one more video uh, at the very end here. I think it's a crash course. There's another example of those molecules and how they're spread more apart in some of these things. And yep, here it is. Um, you'll watch this crash course episode. Very good episode about solid liquids and gas. And I think it answers that question. A lot of people think that air or gas doesn't have any weight and I think the experiment that they perform in, in this video really does kind of show you that air does have weight in a very, very simple way to do that. Anyway, that's pretty much all we did today. We spent a giant portion of the day reviewing those motion graphs from um, the quizzes that we took. And we're going to continue to review probably for about 10 to 15 minutes at the beginning of every class just to make sure that we keep those motion graphs on our mind because some people are still struggling with those. Send me some emails if you don't understand. And we're going to continue to talk more and more about solids, liquids, and gases as we get to how things change from state to state. And then eventually we'll get to how things might change physically and then eventually get to how things might change chemically. And that will be a lot of fun as well. Anyway, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, reach out to email dojo or something for me. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. Uh, and as always, thanks for joining me here. And I look forward to see you again really soon.